Hello everyone and welcome to Creature Future Volume 16 Tentacles. This is a lot of fun to make and I'm very happy with it to be honest. Um, I think it's one of the finest packs of its kind you can buy without trying to sound arrogant to do with tentacles. Um, it's probably the biggest variety you can find online. Well, I haven't seen anything else. If you do, tell me, please. Um, this is just me screwing around with an with just seeing how quickly one can make stuff and then edit it afterwards, dynamish it, whatever. Um, so at first I want to show people exactly what they're getting because this, this one is ideally aimed at ZBrush. I do provide OBJs for people because people will inevitably ask for them. And I'm sure you can probably... See, these curved brushes are made via the source meshes. Beginning, middle, and an end. And as you draw out the curve, it starts with that one, it repeats this guy until you stop drawing the curve, and then it draws the end bit. Now I provide all the source meshes of all the tentacles. I mean, this doesn't look like much, but this is not the main feature, is it? It's just uh, for people who want to screw about with the source. If they so wish. So there's a lot here. I'm not going to go through every one because there's proper renders as you guys have seen. I also provide... These don't look great at all because they're just straight. They have to be like this for people who don't use ZBrush. Um, or just want to use them directly with... Uh, a to retopologize them. This one would be a nightmare to be honest. But yeah, retopologize them, rig them. And... Yeah, animate them, because riggers want them straight, for those who don't know, so the bones can be easily... So it's just the way you rig tentacles and tails and stuff. You don't want to give it give it like this to a, a rigger. They're going to look at you funny and say, what the flying monkey are you doing? Um, so, those are provided for those who need them, but let's get to the main feature, which is definitely not these guys. The main stuff is... Drawing out curves, because that's the fun bit. I'm gonna load the brush. Uh, product. We've got two brushes, some of them overlap. One is constant sized tentacles, like the, the thickness is the same throughout the curve. These ones become smaller as you draw out the curve. Now there's a reason I separated them. It's for convenience, really. Um, this computer I'm working on is not the best, so it's a bit laggy, but yeah, I'm sure you get the idea. Draw out your curve how you want, manipulated. I wonder where I should start. I haven't really planned this, I apologize. But I almost always have the stroke palette open. You just tap on that and it appears there. And the brush. Mm, we don't really need this one, but I'm gonna, we're going to have to look at it anyway. Let's just work on this guy so it's quicker. So the first brush, constant width, so as you can see. My apologies. I want to split the head and stuff. So we can work quickly. Same width throughout. You can manipulate it and do whatever the hell you want with it. The other brush is smaller tip. For convenience, I'm gonna load them in here. Just right click. Right click. So I can quickly switch between them. 19 and 135 in the other. There's only 40 main brushes. I don't want to take the piss and say there's 54. There's 40 plus four variations and then a handful of some overlap in the small tip and some don't. So this brush, exactly the same one as that I've drawn out there. But you see it has got fall off on the tip. So some, with some brushes it works, with others it doesn't. And that is controlled here. So 
If I turn off size, it should pop back to normal to get to that guy. Because we have this nice fall off along the curve. Bam. So you can experiment with this. That works better actually for this guy. This is a nicer. You can have weird things, but I wouldn't rec. Oh no, that's pretty cool. Huh. So yeah, I highly recommend experimenting the curve. Intensity, I, I haven't read what it does. I still don't know. <laughs> but yeah, um, usually the, it starts the wrong way around. I don't know why it'll do this. Just tap on it. I like that too. I like it all. Uh, but I'm just going to reverse it. There we go. That's what you generally do with tentacles, right? Now the cool thing is... While the curve is still active, you can just cycle through them, which is great. You can lengthen it in many ways. Either you hover near the end bit, see a little red line that starts to link them together now. Now you can draw out further. And it lengthens it. It really depends what you're drawing what you what you're drawing it out on, onto. Um, Sometimes I much prefer using liquid mode, uh, which is, have I gone blind? Ah, there we go. I'm holding shift and tapping so it doesn't close all the other uh, palettes, tabs as well. If you turn on liquid, you can just draw and it does that, which is damn cool. This is fairly new to ZBrush, I think half a year or something, maybe longer. So it really depends what you're drawing it out onto, how you want to work. And you can reverse with liquid, it's a little bit finicky. Ah, it's working, there we go. So I'm just dragging back. Which is so handy, because you, in the past you couldn't do that. Then we have elastic, I forgot what this does, but I know it's very handy. That's the same as liquid. It's not like, like a rubber band. Interesting. Um, so by default, I've set all the both these brushes to uh, uh, lock the start. Actually, no, I haven't. Ooh, I'm, I'm gonna have to change that off in this video. So if if that's the default, Ben starts off. So it shouldn't move. I'll probably edit this part of the video out. Oh, there we go. Now that's the correct behavior. This should stay static. Because generally, let's say you have an octopus head there or whatever, or a monster face, and you're a dragon, you don't want it to do the following. Follow you around. You want it to stay put and move it from there. Ideally. I mean, you can do what you want. But this is how I like... Oh, sorry. Lock start is what was on. I'm such an idiot. Lock start. If it's not on... It does this, which is cool to play around with. You generally use that for, I suppose, worms and snakes and stuff, but for tentacles, definitely I have lock start on. So you're nice and it won't, it's rooted to that spot. And undo a bit. What else do we have? Uh, ah, smooth can be quite important. Let's go do this guy. So let's say I'm drawing out, let's draw some, something else. And it's set to snap by default as well, by the way. It's not bad, but it's kind of funky. The curve is, this is a good example, it's a little bit messy now. I try to turn this all, the hot key for this is six. So if you just tap six on your keyboard, it'll smooth this, this curve out. On my hot key, I've changed it to something else by accident, so I use this is the same thing as tapping six. See, it smooths out the curve, and then you tap on it, and it does a really crap job. <laughs> uh, it's because I've added zero, it's my, my bad. There we go. Mm, that's not enough, let's make it five. Oh, 
Oh, I should click smooth. I'm such an idiot. I'm doing everything wrong. Click smooth. That'll smooth out the curve. Click that. And the reason it's still doing that is because snap is on. You turn it off. It should be all right. Nope. You might pull. There we go. So curves are... They have their little little quirks and stuff, but once you get to know them, it's it's great. Um, another fundamental thing is the mouse cursor there. When it's red, it will it will dictate the size. So if I make it bigger and tap on it, it will become bigger. Smaller, it'll become smaller. But if you, I want to make it bigger because it's. If you hover over it you see it turns blue now the functionality is different now you you manipulate it the size of this guy will just change the fall off of your manipulator and tapping does the various things like change you now it changes tentacle and so on it's got a strange fall off let me reset this I want to go back to this guy because it's easier to work with at the moment. Right. Uh, what else do we have? Mm, the rest of them are kind of. Let's do what they say they do. I've never used that, so I can't comment. I don't know what it does. Um, now these modifiers I've set up already for you guys because I find a 15 curve re resolution it's the resolution of this curve to have the least amount of glitches if any at all or maybe it was just that one session I had and where I had a 10 and it just seemed that it would often um, not obey me but now it's fine and to be honest after Sometimes I can't tell the difference, so... Because to me this is exactly the same. I think it might be more expensive having the curve resolution higher. I really have no idea. I can play with this all day, honestly. Um, the angle just speaks for itself. It won't bend. It will have very little bend now, as you can see. It can't bend more than 25 degrees, even though it's doing it, but... It's not as fluid as maximum fluidity, where it's really, you know, like I should expect from tentacles. Damn, I love that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of gnarly things out here. Uh, the rest I don't really use. Uh, one thing you can experiment with is if you turn on stretch and overlap, I showed this in the tail, Tails video. They sh and you turn and you change this. That brush is bizarre. I love it, but it's just bizarre how things are s spread out in different palettes. It's not working now. I wonder why. There we go. It's just, see, it's, the segmentation is just. It's just one way to play with the segmentation. To be honest, I've never really used it so far, but I'm sure I could find it. And it's not really working great now, so screw it. <clears throat> Turn that off. Yeah, that's about all you really need to know with the curves um, and when to use. You will find out through experience when to when liquid liquid is better or when to turn on snap is good or not. Because sometimes it can get too heavily into crevices and nooks and crannies and it'll just be difficult to work with but most of the time I find it fine if you find that distance not great just go to depth tap even it hugs it closer if it's a ground zero it might penetrate which is fine that's pretty good pretty crap at the moment actually going right through it let's change that again and there we go it snaps back to the reason things are disappearing is because I've got that on let me just 
turn this off. Let's go to the rock. The worst rock I've ever made. I'm very proud of my shit rock. Um, this guy is one of my favorites. It's based on uh, The Mist, 19, 2007. Love that film. Really grotesque and with a brutal ending. And their underside's got these hundreds of disgusting little mouths that just rip your flesh off quite easily. Well, in the film at least. So I thought I had to model that. Yeah, I mean, I suppose I could go through these. There are proper renders of them all, but I start at the beginning. So I thought I'd show how things work first, because most people probably don't want to see this, but I'll show for those who want to see what, what exactly what they're getting. Is, let's go through them. Octo number three is first on the list, because Octo one, two, three, four, five all taper, whereas these guys don't taper. Mm -hmm. This is one I quite like as well. It's quite gnarly. Quite. Let's make it a bit longer. There we go. You get the idea. I won't dwell too long on each one. Just rapid fire through them. This one also almost looks like a, like a really Zeno. Morphic, not a xenomorphic, but an alien um, centipede, millipede, centipede. And its underside is fairly gnarly as well. I've shown this one earlier. I love these spikes. Um, ooh, let's go smaller. Spike or now what's it called? Impaler. I think it's apt. Snap now. It's a little bit laggy now because my computer is six years old now. And a bit funky inside. Ah, one thing that's very important with curves, I'm glad I remembered this is blue, blue, blue. Tap first. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> Go for small. I'm gonna use something that's easier to work with for now. There we go. Prober. This is prober. So we let's turn blue. So I tap first and I hold control. And now you can rotate it on its Z axis. Which sometimes is a lifesaver if you if you have to do that with a move brush or you know, it's impossible. You can't. You just can't do it. Well you can if you mask and rotate, but that is hell. I've done it and it's hell. So tap first, hold control. And rotate now it, it can become funky sometimes that's just the way they brush is and the earlier on the curve you do it the more it affects everything else but generally I just need to turn 45 degrees I find like that and that's fine by me if I'm curling around whatever it needs to curl around this guy's based on half-life it's not the same but half-life one you know the uh, I don't know what they're called I can just remember they were absolutely terrifying in that game. And loud as fuck. Sorry, I shouldn't swear. Um, let's go bigger again so you can see it. Another way to access these is if you press M. Which is great. But I'm so used to using these that I, I don't really mind. That was expected. We should undo a bit before we start turning these guys into mush. Smaller. There we go. Right, I had to cut the video there because I realized in post processing that some horrible mic noise came in, so I'm going to redo this last bit. It's probably a good thing because I've just made copies of these two brushes because sometimes you don't want to see the brush from the top like that so I've included two more brushes literally just now which is the same guy but oriented towards its side because sometimes you don't want to have it not oriented on its side sometimes you just want to do like this 
instead of you know seeing it from the top it really depends on scenario but I'm sure you can see what I mean uh, like yeah well I'm gonna go back to this because I'm running out of time so I have to redo all of these guys so this guy is the same as this guy so they're counted as one brush of the 40 that I stated you get. You actually get more than 40 because some are variations. Um, yeah. It's the underside of this guy. It's gnarly suckers. Bone claw. His nephew called Blunt. This is my one of the three claws. This is my favorite one. It's the smallest, but he's very grotesque to me, at least. Ooh, we don't want that happening. That's when it snaps on. Hmm. This one's quite big, I think. Yeah, let's make it a bit smaller. There we go. If it's offset sometimes, just uh, go to brush palette, depth, and bring it in. Bam. Whoops, don't want to do that. Ah, oh, stalk on an eye. I'm careful you don't. There we go. Actually, liquid would be much better for this. Let's give it a go. Or easier. Yeah, way easier. Oh, I love the liquid function. So good. And occasionally you'll get that happening, which is so how curves like to behave. Just undo and redo it. Yeah. Turn this around. Holding control. Let's have it look up. That look kind of affectionate. Anyway, I'm going to undo all that. I was getting carried away. Let's turn liquid off. Globular. Really like this one. It's weird. Globes. Ah, I saw a picture on a photo on Google of a snake eating a massive uh, centipede, and it was just one of the grossest things I've ever seen. So I thought it would be a cool tentacle. So it's become just a tentacle arm with a centipede thing on it. This guy is called Unravel. It's just this hollow spiraling tube. Um, yeah, I quite like that one. Uh, let's move on to the other brush. We just got 35. Um, smaller tip. So this one's got a bit more. We have our standard octopi. There's a side brush for these as well, where you can apply it from the side. And... Whoops, I meant to catch it. 
I really like a hot key for liquid. There you go. It's, a, it's about seven octopus styles. You saw this guy before, but this is like the same as the one in the other brush, but without size turned on, just for convenience. It's not counted as two separate brushes, it's just for your convenience. This is like a giant squid's tentacle because they've got nasty hooks on their suckers. It's like a more of fantasy style, eldritch, Lovecraftian thing going on. Um, this is one of my favorites. Very simple, but quite gnarly. Aggressive looking thing. Another furry tentacle. Well, not furry. What do you call that again? Uh, a finny. I forgot. I forgot word. Sorry. Can't remember what it's called. It's dorsal fin or something. I believe that's all the octopus-like ones. Now we're getting to the more gnarlier stuff again. This one's called Philly. Philly is a I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's the stuff inside your guts. It's lining all the inside of your guts. It's like you kind of little fine tube hair thing. It's just disgusting. Let's go to a shiny material. Slicer. I don't know, armadillo meets hell. Uh... This one's got kind of, kind of arrogant. I like it. This guy's the same as the one in the other brush, but with a narrow head. Also counting as one brush again. Ah, one of the first ones I made. Really aggressive. Another aggro guy. This one again, the one based on the mist, one of my favorites. It's so gross, all these little mouths chomping away at your flesh. Mmm. Here's an odd one. Teeth. It's lined with rows of human teeth. Same as one in the other um, brush, but with uh, fall off. I think this one as well. And this one. Again, they don't count as, I'm not double counting them as the amount you get. There's definitely 40 core brushes. Ah, the spinal cord brush. These two guys count as one because the only difference is there's a gap with some veins and stuff showing. Where you can turn off, fall off, and have your very own spine to play with. This is coming handy with many horrible creature designs, I'd imagine. Let's turn that back on. Ah, the one with a single tooth. So satisfying to move him. This was in the other pack, but with fall off. Same with that guy. Ah, Inspector. I love this guy. He's got such a nice silhouette. I just really like that. It's like a seahorse on acid. Well, it's not at all, but... Yeah. Simple, but very effective, I think. Claw one, but with fall off. You know that one. Ah, the eyes. What a strange thing. 
the wailing. Screamer, bunch of mouths doing the obvious. Love this one. Globular, globula again with fall off. I prefer without though. Unravel with fall off. It's got that cool little tuft. Ah, fresh tendrils. I don't know what this is, but it's a tentacle. And then finally we have rose vine. Something nice. Why not? Amongst all the terrible horror, the eldritch, Lovecraftian filth. So there we have it. Um, I hope I've covered everything. Um, uh, one more thing, actually. Um, my workflow generally, generally with tentacles, um, I would always make sure I group them. So let's say I've got my tentacle. It could be anything on a character's face or wherever. So I would then, once you know, I've played with it, and I've got it where I want it. I would uh, commit. You tap on the mesh. Then I'm with control, tap outside on blank space, then control W. What this has done is it's made everything that's masked its own polygroup. And this will become important later. So let me undo that and just in case you missed. Tap on the mesh to commit the curve. Um, control, tap there, which inverts the mask. Control W, which will make this the mass but one polygroup. Couldn't really see it clearly there, but it, it happened. Um, so now let's say I've got another guy doing that. You know, whatever. Uh, control tap outside, control W. They look like this is the same, but they're not. You can see that it's got its own polygroup. Because if you want to afterwards come and manipulate these if you use just move well they're both moved together if you use move topological huh? 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 this will happen because the way the curves are drawn out is they're segmented that's how these tri-meshes work eventually you dynamesh them together but if I was going to dynamesh it all together it would just mesh that with that so um, now that they're their own groups, because there's there are actually three groups before dynamizing the beginning, the middle, and the end. But we've made them one group, each tentacle. So I can activate Gizmo, control tap on anything, and it's it, now I can use a move tool. Hang on. Freely. Without so it's a great way to work. Just keep yourself organized, because to group it afterwards is can be a massive pain in the ass. And if you want to dynamish them together, um, which we end up doing eventually is, we'll probably need 512, I'm guessing. Turn on groups, dynamish. So what this does, it, it dynamishes all these segments together. So I've got move topological now on, but it's all one contiguous mess, mesh now. Now you don't even have to mask if you don't want to, or you can, you know, because sometimes you will need to mask. But that's a great way to keep your tentacles organized. So you know it's lovely optimized stuff. Yeah, I think that's quite important. Eventually, uh let's pretend our character is an octopus. It could be anything, right? Or a globular globuluna. I just made that up, but that's what it is. It's a globular. Uh, I'm gonna split this rock. I control alt tapped on that, so now we have our creature. Let's focus just on this too for clarity. How do I well you do dynamesh again? So in this case, it probably would have been better to split them again. Um, let me turn off the rock. So now this separate subtools, up and down arrows. 
Let me get out of my tablet, excuse me. One second. So I'm dividing it. Get out the clay tube, clay build up. Finest brush in the world. I'm just gonna screw about. Normally I do not sculpt with AI on, it's not a good idea, but for now, for presentation, it's fine. Oh, I don't have symmetry, I have local symmetry. Mm, a bit off. Never mind. It was really rough and quick. Let's inflate a bit. Let's use the standard brush a bit. Doing this rough as hell just to save time. Okay, let us uh, combine these guys. So he's above him. So <clears throat> merge, merge down. I am sure it's okay. Now it's one thing. Let's dynamesh it, but I'm gonna not keep the groups. I want it to be one thing. So it's still going to keep the groups, but they're meshed together now. Which if you had groups turned on, it would keep the groups and have the tentacles be separate. But it's all dynamesh. But now you can, you know, really meld them together in whatever type of creature it is. I'm going to do a really bad job now because I am running out of time and you're probably running out of patience. <laughs> Use clay fill. Really nice brush too. I want to undo all my work and just fill that up. There we go. I don't know what's going on here. There's this black hole here. It's dynamic again. Yep. Yeah. Isn't that just dandy? Well, ignore that. Let's focus on this side. I don't know why that's happening with this mesh. And that's generally how you'd meld tentacles, you know, only, but only do this once you've signed off in your head, like you're happy with these guys, what they're doing. Oh, I had symmetry on. I'm an idiot. That's why this happened. On an asymmetrical object. Wow, I'm a massive idiot. Anyway, I'm sure you get the idea. I'm not going to waste your time anymore. Um... No, you are. That's how you meld stuff with, with uh, dynamishing. But yeah, as I said, do that at the very end. And there's also the time you can come in and kill the repetitive, uh, make all of these bits maybe a bit more unique. I mean, it looks fine, actually. Obviously, it's very rough, but I'm sure you get the idea. So thank you for watching. Um, here we go. I think I've covered everything. Um, and I hope you enjoy this pack as much as I enjoyed making it. Sorry about the audio mic problems throughout and the glitches. Um, I was all over the place. See you guys later.